The latest 1.5 update has brought us The Forge, and The Forge is absolutely packed with fun new stuff and a way to really upgrade our end game. I will quickly explain everything that you can do with The Forge and give you some tips and tricks from my own testing. There is a ton to go through, so let's get started. You can add enchants to tools and weapons. It costs a single prismatic shard and 20 cinder shards. The enchant will be applied randomly to your tool or weapon, so hopefully you get the one you want without too many attempts. Let's get started with the axe. There are currently four different options to upgrade your axe. The efficient enchant will make your axe cost no energy. This upgrade is kind of cool, but this late into the game, I don't really think it's needed. Some of the other options are much better. Then we have the powerful enchant. This will make your axe strong and make it slightly faster to chop down trees. It doesn't seem to make much of a difference for regular trees, but it does save you some time when trying to get hardwood in the secret woods. Shaving is an interesting one. It will increase the amount of wood you get per tree. After some testing, I know Notice that the regular axe usually gives 21 pieces of wood, and with the shaving enchant, you'll get an average of 24 pieces of wood. And we all know how much wood you need in the endgame, with how many kegs and stuff you will need. So the shaving option is quite decent. My favorite enchant is the swift enchant. If you are playing on PC, you can download a macro tool to allow you to animation cancel. The swift axe seems to be as fast as if you had animation canceling macro. It is considerably faster than the regular chopping animation. I think I will always go with the swift enchant on the axe. Now console players can technically cancel animation as well using this enchant. For the pickaxe, we have quite a few options, and one of my favorites is the powerful enchant on the pickaxe. Usually it would take 4 hits to harvest some iridium nodes, but with the powerful enchant, it only takes 3 hits. It doesn't sound like it would make that much of a difference, but I kind of like it. Hitting an iridium node 4 times can get quite tedious when you are on floor 500 and there are tons of iridium ore all over the place. The pickaxe also has an efficient enchant which will allow you to use your axe without using any energy. I think this enchant would be better if we could get it earlier in the game, but this late into the game, we already probably have plenty of food, so energy isn't really a problem anymore. Just like the wood axe, you can get the swift enchant on the pickaxe. This is a must because you can rush through the mines super fast. I'm having a hard time deciding between the powerful enchant and the swift enchant. The swift enchant will make it easier to find ladders on the easier floors and the powerful enchant will make harvesting iridium easier. Now, which one do I prefer? The hull has many options. Let's chat about the generous enchant first. It is quite simple. It will give you a 50% chance to get double items from hoeing the ground. I always use this enchant when I need tons of clay because it actually does make a big difference. The archaeologist enchant will increase the chances of finding artifacts on those warm holes. I would pick this enchant if you haven't completed the museum collection yet and just need some artifacts. Otherwise, some of the other options are much better. The efficient enchant will save you some energy and the swift enchant will make it faster to use the tool. I kind of like the swift enchant because it can save you a lot of time if you have large areas to hold, but the reaching enchant is a little bit more satisfying for me. It increases the radius of your hole by one tile. An iridium hole can hold around 18 tiles. An iridium hole with the reaching enchant can hold 25 tiles at once. I think the swift enchant is actually more effective, but I prefer the reaching enchant because bigger is better. <laughs> Now we have watering cans. Naturally, efficient enchant means no energy costs, and the swift enchant makes it work faster, the same as the previous tools. The watering can also has the reaching enchant that will increase the range of your tool to be the same as the hull. I prefer the reaching enchant on the watering can too, but there is another one that can be pretty good as well. The watering can has a bottomless enchant. This means your watering can will never run out of water. You can just water forever without needing to refill it. When you need to water a huge area, this enchant can be quite effective. The fishing rod has a few fun enchants. There is an auto hook enchant, 
that will automatically start the caching process. I think this one could be quite useful if you aren't paying full attention to the game, like if you are just chilling and watching someone on YouTube on your other screen. The preserving enchant will give you a 50% chance that your bait or fishing tackle won't be consumed after each catch. This works very well when you are using magic bait because that stuff is expensive. And then there is the master enchant. This one will increase your fishing level by one, making it slightly easier to catch some fish because your fishing bar will be bigger. You can pair that with some fishing food and your bar will be absolutely huge, making it easier to catch some of the legendary fish. Before we continue, if you have been enjoying this video so far, please consider leaving a like. This helped the YouTube algorithm out a bit. I would really appreciate it. Now onto the fun stuff, the weapons. The Crusader Enchant is really good. It will increase your damage to ghosts and mummies by 50%. It will allow you to kill mummies without needing to use bombs. I am a big fan of this one because mummies just annoy me so much. The bug killer enchant increases your damage to all bugs by 100%. It will also allow you to kill those armored bugs that are usually fully immune to damage. Not a bad option, but it isn't that useful as there aren't many bugs in the skull cavern. I think it would help in the dangerous regular mines though. The vampirism enchant, this is my favorite enchant on this list. Every time you defeat an enemy, there is a 9% chance that you will heal 9% of the enemy's maximum health. If you kill a slime with 400 health, you can heal 36 health. It doesn't sound like much, but it can quickly add up. The Artful Enchant reduces the cooldown of all your special moves. This is probably the best enchant for the hammer because the hammer's special move can basically one-shot most of the enemies. And with a reduced cooldown, the Skull Cavern has no chance. There is one more enchant. It's called the Haymaker. But yeah, it just allows you to get more fiber when hitting weeds with your weapon. So it's not that great. The enchants that increase your damage are just much better. You can also enhance your weapons using precious gems. Amethysts increase the knockback by 1, aquamarines increase the crit chance by 4.6%, emeralds increase your weapon speed, jades increase the critical damage by 10%, rubies increases your overall damage on your weapons, and the topaz increases the defense bonus that you get from your weapons. You can enhance a weapon up to 3 times and you can mix and match as you want. The first enhance will cost 10 cinder shards, the second 15, and the third will cost you 20 cinder shards. And lastly, the forge allows you to combine two rings together to make a single improved ring. Unfortunately, you cannot combine two of the same rings together. You can get some really strong combinations. I usually combine an iridium band with some other fun ring like a napal ring or the luck ring. Combining rings will cost you 20 cinder shards. You can also combine two weapons together. The combined weapon will keep the stats of the first weapon, but it will take the appearance of the second weapon. If you really like a look of a certain weapon, but want the damage of an infinity blade, then this is for you. And of course, you can turn a galaxy weapon into an infinity weapon by combining three galaxy souls and a specific galaxy weapon. These weapons are insanely powerful and everyone needs at least one infinity weapon. Check out my full infinity weapon guide if you want to. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful and if it was, please consider leaving a like. And while you're here, you might as well just subscribe. But for now, I will see you in the next video.